So when I saw these earrings, I thought of that look. Look at these earrings. Eight other reasons. I'm telling y'all, they have the best jewelry. And these feel, they're somewhere in between feeling not too heavy to drag down your ear, but they feel so quality. Um, they did send these, but I, I don't make any commission. I don't make anything off of this. I just absolutely love them. And I'm so excited to do a look. When I saw them, I said, I need those because I want to do a look. I'm going to leave y'all a link and just know that sometimes when I post things, they go very, very quickly and they sell out. So here's the link. If you're into this vibe, go grab them. So we're going to be doing silver. So I want to do cool tones. That's my cool tone pinchers. I don't know. I always do that when I'm thinking of something. <laughs> I need my clean canvas in the shade fair. And I found, so I'm going to use the shade fair because it's more neutral and it won't warm up the eyeshadows. Medium is a little bit warmer and darker, and I wanna keep them as cool as possible. I could use white, but I don't feel like doing that much cleanup because I'm gonna do two, I might do three looks today, so I don't want to have to do too much work. By the way, Gerard Cosmetics is having an amazing sale right now. Buy one, get one. Wild, right? I'm gonna leave their website, go check it out. It's, it's a pretty wild sale. So I'm gonna be using these two palettes. I love these palettes. I love them so much. They are so true, cool. They're such true cool tones, I should say. I think they're fantastic, and I'm not sure why more people didn't talk about them. I bought these when they came out, and I've used them quite a bit. So this one's called Simple Kind of Life, and I'm actually gonna start with this shade on an E28. I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and press this across our crease and this is going to be our first transition shade. I'm actually not going to complicate the top part too much. I'm going to grab some more of that same shade and I want you to keep in mind I'm grabbing a very small amount. Look how nice and cool tone that is. It looks like a contour and that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I just want to contour the eyes a little bit. Maybe carve out a little bit of a very soft crease. Still using the side of the brush with whatever's left. I'm going to bring it over this way. Let me talk about the E28 really quickly. So you'll notice that it's not as fluffy as its little friend here, the E29. So the E29 is just a very quick buffing, finishing brush. But with this one, you're not gonna have quite that same fluff. So you're not gonna be able to go as quickly. But with this one, you can still go very, very quickly, but you're gonna have a lot more definition with this one. So say I wanna take a darker color and I wanna get the definition here. Press it in there. It's the perfect shape. So you can still work very quickly, but you're gonna be able to get more definition with the E28. I'm gonna go ahead and link it. Think definition, and then using the side to tap it out. Best of both worlds. Now I'm gonna hop over here and I'm gonna grab that shade and I'm just going to darken the crease a little bit more. I want you to notice that it's on the tip of my brush. so. I remember when I would watch YouTube many years ago, they wouldn't even show you how they're dipping it in there. So how I'm dipping my brush into this matters. Most of us, the few clips I did see on YouTube, I would just always see digging into the pan. And that's not bad, but what it's doing is it's loading up product on your brush. Now, where's all of that product gonna go? Our eye area is very small. <laughs> So what I do is I'm very, very, I very much want to show you how I'm picking this up. So I grab it right here and I'll show you. It's on the side of the brush. It's just on one side. It's not on the tip of the brush. I flip that towards the ceiling and then what I'm doing is pressing it in here. And then the brush is doing most of the work for you. So once I have it placed, I want to wipe off any excess. This is not a microfiber towel, it's just a towel, but it's Sheila, so she's more than a towel. So I'm just gonna take the side of my brush now, and I'm just gonna tap and transition. Always best to start with small amounts. And that's one of the reasons you'll never see me go, whoa, this eyeshadow is so pigmented, or sometimes you'll go, ooh, that eyeshadow doesn't look pigmented at all. I have picked up the smallest amount, because I remember watching those videos, digging in here, going in, and then going, how am I gonna blend all of this eyeshadow? So pick up small amounts. So just to make this really simple, I'm gonna grab this from REM Beauty and clean up our lid space. 
I'm actually just going to use the applicator. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I just remembered my friend Ernesto, he did kind of this vibe and that's kind of what we're going to do, but I'm not going to call this a recreation because obviously we're on another, we're on another journey here, <laughs> but I'm going to tag him and give him credit for this awesome vibe. I actually want to take this lid color a little bit cooler. It dried a little peachy on me and that's when undertone comes in. Undertone's an interesting thing. There we go. We'll cool it down. I'm using this shade here from the Danger Zone palette. I'm getting wild. Not too wild, still within range. We're actually not gonna do black liner and that's gonna make this so much easier. So what I did is I grabbed this shade and I actually grabbed it on a C30, the concealer brush. And I'm just pressing it into my lash line. And then once, here, I'll show you up here. Picking up more of the shade, I just kind of connected. Look how easy this is. It's cause we're using eyeshadow. A lot of times when we start to grab gel, liquid, really any kind of black liner, it's going to get a lot more complicated. But using eyeshadow, you have so much control. And this brush is doing some stuff here. Then just connect it. So, so easy. And then shading becomes so easy because you just tap it. And then you relax your eye and you just see where you want to shade. Now I'm grabbing this shade on an E27 and we'll start to transition this color. I feel like even transitioning this type of smoky liner just adds such a beautiful dimension. Okay, this is getting fun. I'm gonna show you what I did. I grabbed the Mario mixing palette and his mixing medium, this right here, this metals palette, and I mixed it up. I did use whatever was left here because I didn't want to waste it be careful with sharp instruments around your eye. Just kind of wiping that off there. And I'm, notice I'm focusing most of it towards the front part. Now we're gonna grab the E27 and I'm just gonna start to feather it over this way. I kind of want it to look like a firework. How it's heavier at the front and then just kind of explodes off into sparkles. Mm -hmm. mm, I felt like getting creative today and I want to thank y'all. And yes, I will save yesterday's look. I know that this look is for, um, we don't know, <laughs> but I have been doing very, um, wearable looks recently and they are all my saved highlights and I'll save yesterday's as well. But some days just to kind of feel like myself, I have to get a little spicy. House of Lashes, Nor Fairy Lights. I love these. And then I'll pinch them with my natural lashes. And these are also from House of Lashes. We're going to do a silver waterline because we want to look like it's pouring out. So we're going to use this one from Maybelline. So affordable. So pretty. I'm feeling spicy. I'm going to use my Double Wear Foundation today. Estee Lauder. My shade is Outdoor Beige. And I'll just put a little bit here. I've talked about this before, but working in sections with a matte foundation is the key. Because once they dry and then we're trying to go back over them, look at that match. It's chaos. So just work in sections. We'll work it that way. Grab some more. Work in this section. Easy peasy. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Sephora concealer. And a lot of you pointed out that a lot of you have been with me a long time. That this combo that I've been using is the Kylie Cosmetics duo that I used to use probably four years ago and you're not wrong. Remember Gypsum and Himalaya? 23.5P is would be Himalaya and then this one right here would be Gypsum. So I love these two mixed together. Also we'll say this formula is a lot better than the Kylie one. The Kylie one was so good for the time but obviously all the brands have had time to work on formulas. This is amazing. Let's set with our Givenchy powder. Puff is coming soon. I'm gonna grab my NARS bronzer. I'm, I'm going to grab this on a C40 today because I really wanted to fuse it. The other brush I'm using is a prototype and I'm always testing out things, but this one I know is tried and true. And I've only set my under eye and I barely set the center of my face. 
That way we can still work with creams if we need to. So I like to put bronzer on my jawline, not because I'm really shaping, but because it just kind of keeps everything uniform and it even helps make sure that say my foundation, if, if it's just a touch too light, everything is cohesive. So I'm not really contouring, I'm kind of just transitioning from here to here. I'm wild today. I wanna to try out this Shiseido mattifying powder on the rest of my face. I'm gonna start on my jawline and just kind of continue to set. That's pretty and blurring. Let's try it on the middle of the forehead. I'm just evening that out on the brush. Nice. That's pretty. Do you know what no one else talks about? Is evening product out on your brush. Watch this. Most of us would dip in. Look at that. That's absolute chaos. So I would, I don't even, y'all notice I never did that. Still, that's still not even, and look how much that picked up. So what I would do is kind of just move everything over to one side, which I do normally when the lid is shut. And then if I'm still in this conundrum here, I'm just going to kind of even that out on the back of my hand. See, see, it's all about how you pick a product. That's still too much. It's chaos. If I had left it all lumpy like that and everywhere, I could have went to set my foundation and it would have become patchy. So even out every single product on your brush. So this is actually really easy. I know I say that and I do spicy looks every day, but I promise it's really, really easy. We are definitely gonna need an E26 and I'm going back into this. Now I did have to add more of the mixing medium because it will dry down completely normal. Let's add half a drop. Let's go ahead and bring this down. That's basically it. You're just doing a very rounded shape and connecting here. Now with the Valentino liner, we're gonna start from our natural lash line. Bring it around here. And capture it. <laughs> Let's do the Sephora blush here. The shade is Shame On You, and I'm using a C41. Back soon. Ooh, that's really pretty. I'm gonna add mascara, but only on the outer part of the eye. Okay, I'm gonna do a nude, and it's gonna be an extreme nude. But I'm gonna hop off here, and I'm gonna film putting that on top. She's restocking tomorrow, by the way. So this is ABH Pure Hollywood, and let's just put that on. Ooh, so pretty. Go ahead and throw that on. Mama is downstairs telling Jean something. And then I'm gonna grab Endless Cacao and just kinda define the lip line. Just every single day. I'm literally gonna edit yesterday's look and I'll put it on my page. That way it'll live forever and it can't go anywhere. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this spicy number. I know it's extra spicy, but like I said, I do things for everyone. Sometimes I have to do things for me. Now I'm going to go film this and I have to go hop on a call and I wanna grab a coffee. I have a lot to do. I love you all so much and I'll see you in the comments in just a little while cause I'll post it soon. I love y'all, bye.